Oh, yeah, um, just thought I would run through uh, progress with the uh, smart home lamp um, and general libraries. So what you're looking at on screen is the um, script from the Arduino sketch. And what I have is uh, a series of tabs here. And I tend to keep all of these common. So Angular Smart Home is like my common master library. Okay, This lets me do everything that I need to handle to make this thing work. <clears throat> uh, and it includes callback functions, it includes switches, it includes uh, emulation of, of Alexa devices, it includes uh, plug and play bro <laughs> yeah, plug and play broadcasts, it includes uh, a compressed HTML file, a compressed JavaScript file, and a specifics tab. Now, specifics is the th are, you know are the things that change basically between each of these implementations. So I just have one file that I amend. And I set up certain constants, so this one is called bedroom, for example, and I've got a bit of a description around what it does, and then I have certain things created, so I have events created to say things that have to happen at certain times of the day, and I have my own functions to say what I should do when the local switch gets pushed, how I should run my setup, and how I should run my loop. Now these, uh, I don't have a void setup and a void loop in this particular specifics.h because that's been defined over here in my master one. But then each thing that, that happens that is specific to this device, I handle inside this one file. So this one file changes basically uh, between each of the types of devices that I have or each implementation, each specific implementation of this particular code. Uh, and you'll see that if I go into my void setup here, that I in fact do a whole load of standard creation things in terms of setting up the Wi-Fi manager, setting up the access point names, uh, setting up the plug and play uh, broadcast responders, uh, setting up the um, the response to things like script JS, action PHP, and features, um, and that gives me uh, all of the utility that I need basically to build some interesting uh, programming. Yeah. So by default, this thing is going to turn on. It's going to run through. It's going to pick up the time and date. It's going to uh, read the events list out of here, um, and it's going to work out what time it is and whether it needs to do any of these things or not. And if it does them, then great. It does them. It logs that it's done them. And if it doesn't need to do them yet, it waits until it does. Where it gets interesting is that all of this is exposed uh, via this action um, down here, this action uh, PHP file. In fact, it's that action PHP. So I handle action. Remember, handle action is actually sitting inside specific. So when I hit this event, it's going to do something. If we're going to have a look at what handle action kind of thing that does, if I load the IP address of this device, which is 192.168.0.34, it's on my local network, um, and I start to provide uh, some events uh, to it or some switches to this, it'll start doing some different things. So if I say action PHP, uh, and I'll say uh, Bob equals true, it'll say, no, I don't know what that is. Uh, in order to show you what it does, I'm just going to pop over here to my phone, and I'm going to turn this on. Um, so let's pop that up and pop it onto camera mode. And that should be enough of a clue about what you're going to see. Uh, and if I say action and I say master here yeah, equals true, <clears throat> then that will turn on. And if I say master equals false, it'll say uh, master turned off. And this is the response I'm getting back. So I'm passing back what's called a JSON uh, object, basically. Um, so I have a tag here, says a message, this is the property, and this is the value of that. So there is a message, and its value is master turned off manually. Or if I say true, then the message is master turned on manually. <clears throat> so already that's web accessible, um, well, you know, local IP accessible uh, within my environment. But what I want to be able to do is go a little bit further uh, and get some, uh, you know, get a nice UI on that. Now to do that, I'm just going to view source here. I'm going to do it. Um, so I do that. No, you don't do like that. Okay, fine. Try again. One, two, one, zero, three, four. And can I view the source of this? It's like that. Okay, yeah, that was close. Um, so this is the uh, index HTML. Now I tell it in here when I, uh, whenever I do this, uh, you know, whenever I request the root, handle the root, and handle root itself. Yeah, is is part of this. Um, Part of this library, yeah, part of my standard, my uh, my standard smart home. So this doesn't change. Um, this always does the same thing. Handle root always provides um, the same index page. So index HTML um, dot h, which is this. So the question is then, how do you make it uh, change based upon the status of the device? So you'll see in here, there's a whole load of uh, Angular directives that make me a nice UI, but it compresses down quite small. And at the bottom, I call out to Angular from uh, Google APIs. But at the very bottom of the page, 
uh, I also uh, call out script.js. So if we have a little look at script.js, you'll see that that corresponds to this file over here, script.js. And <clears throat> that is also common. Um, and what that does is tells the UI how it's going to be built and how it's going to work and how to access the local storage and what to show on screen and, and what not to and what to suppress and so on and how to scan. All of that is completely static, but it consumes something called uh, resources. I think resources, do I mean resources? It might not even be resources, it might be, no, it's not that. Is it called response.json? Let's have a look what it's called. Response.json. No, okay, I'm gonna look in the source and find out what it's called. What is it called? Uh, fe oh, features, yeah, okay, sorry, yeah. Um, so let's go over here then to features. Yes, that's right. Uh, features, and that tells uh, this browser. So when this when this code runs and that script runs, it's going to request features JSON, which is going to tell it this is the address of the local device. This is the app name, so it's called Bedroom. This is the version it's running. This is its description, so you know what you're connecting to. This is the current time of day according to the um, according to the device, which you can see. Yep, it's correct. If I just refresh that, and hopefully it'll track along. So yeah, it's running a few seconds out, man. That's fine. Uh, this mode is toggle, so I have a number of modes. Uh, I've got percentage-based things, I've got uh, toggles, I've got momentary states. Is it powered, yes or no? Is it using daylight savings time? Is it using a timer? When's the next event due? What's the next event? Is it going to skip it? What was the last thing it did? What's its base URL? What's the master parameter? So this is telling it, okay, you want to use action PHP master, yeah? And then you've got true or false to turn it on or off because this is a toggle device. And then these are the events, so at uh, 0800, wake up, yeah, and then at 0820, power down, and so on. What that means is I can use Angular to build this UI. So this is the specifics of that device. If I, again, just pop over to here a second, and I say, uh, you're on, you're off. Yeah, you can see it just tracks along with me on this, and that refreshes periodically anyway. Um, it's tracking the timer, and it's going to remember that I'm going to do this thing. You can see that message comes back up here now instead. And this is all responsive as well, so I can bring it down. Uh, and if I turn it off, it'll just pop up down there for me. So again, these are just the sort of standard functions that are built into uh, this particular template using Angular, which makes life a little simpler for me. Um, you can also see, yes, the events that's gonna do, uh, and I can access the update software link here and actually change this thing. And I can see that the last action that's actually occurred uh, that it wanted to track apart from me in here, because obviously multiple people can access this device at once and ask me to do different things. The cleverness um, comes in actually on this screen. So because, <coughs> excuse me, because I have completely standard uh, smart home sketch, completely standard script JS, completely standard index HTML, and it's only the features that change between devices, it means I can ask around the local network for other devices. So I can find the bedroom lamp. Yeah, sure, I can turn that on and off. But I can also access the kitchen blind. I can also access the bell jar downstairs, and I can access the cat feeder. And because this is a momentary device, it has a trigger button rather than a toggle slider. And because this is a percentage-driven device, and I'm going to turn it back on because it's dark, um, I have uh, the ability to position it to multiple locations within that slider. Same for the bell jar. I can just set the brightness. Yeah, I can change it to a different level, and it will tell me that it's, it's set the brightness. So that will be changing it in my lounge. Equally, this UI can consume the API from TP-Link. So I can set the uh, lounge lamps on and off, the blanket on and off, Darcy's room on and off, hall lights on and off, and so on. So I can read the value of all of those things from any one of these network devices. All of them can provide this same UI. They all look exactly the same. And furthermore, I can click into them and go and look at specifically, what does this device do? How does it work? Yeah, and again, for any of these, I can go and look at the feeder. What did you last do? So I can see that actually the feeder was just only very recently powered on. Okay. Um, and that, you know, it says down here, yeah, powered on was the last device. So it hasn't done any of these things today. But it's going to do a feed in 88 minutes. It's going to give the cat some supper, which is half past eight. So that's about right. Um, and again, all of these are being consumed, generating that same thing. And if you watch the network traffic, what you would see is all I'm really doing, and I can actually show you it happening uh, in here, is I'm reaching out to uh, the features. So for each of these devices, I'm just saying, give me the features. Yeah, so from number 34, 12, 13, and 22, and then the rest of the time, it'll sit there just scanning around the local network, just finding out if it's got any other devices. But meanwhile, all of these things get built up, and it's working out for me uh, you know, what the status of these devices are, whether they're on or off, who's turned them on or off, what the last action was, and so on. You can see I've got a little icon up here, feeder, telling me that this is not the device I'm actually connected to. I'm connected to a script running on a lamp, 
um, but it's allowing me to access this remote feeder because it uses exactly the same UI, just with some different, uh, you know, some different properties inside my events and some different commands up here. And again, it knows how to do it. So the final tab um, is settings, uh, and that allows me to basically kick off a scan. It says scan from this range of IPs to that range of IPs, go and find everything and store those. Uh, and for TP-Link, this is where you want to go. This is your credentials. Put in a password, and if I authenticate and refresh, it'll go and pick up any new TP-Link devices that are in my account. So what I end up with is a sort of master switchboard that allows me to control all the devices in the house, um, whether they're via TP-Link or whether they're via ESP8266s, using a common UI. And it doesn't matter which one I connect to. They all do this exactly the same thing. It just changes the order that they come up here in. If we can look behind the scenes and see some other things that this, this can do, so we understand that it can provide a, uh, a dashboard to control itself and that it can report its own features. But there's also another port here. So running on port 81, um, if I can find it, setup.xml I think it is, then you can see it also is able to respond um, as if it were uh, an emulated socket made by Belkin. Uh, now, of course, this is not. This is an ESP8266. Uh, we know because we know that this address turns that light on and off. Um, and it is not connected to a socket. It's connected to an ESP8266 chip, which is sitting inside it, which I can probably show you by picking it up and turning it on its back. You can see it just in there. There's a little... Hello, sorry, I've got to wake my phone up again. Wake up phone. Sitting in here, you can see that little blue light. So that's my ESP8266. And in fact, if I pop over to here and turn it off, yeah, then you'll see that the little blue light goes out and that back on the little blue light comes back. So that's my ESP8266 um, living inside that lampshade. Uh, but this setup XML on port 81 means that um, this device has been bound. And now I've picked up a friendly name here, Bedroom. That's picked up from the specifics of the script. So I remember in here I said originally that my uh, Alexa device is Bedroom in lowercase. Now, which means I've said Alexa, so she's woken up now. Um, oh, Alexa, Alexa, stop. Thank you. Alexa, turn off the Bedroom. Alexa, turn on the bedroom. Okay. So she is requesting this URL to find out what kind of devices do we have on the network and then how do they respond to services. And she knows how to call them. And when they are called, it's this lot up here that responds instead and says, oh, okay, I've got one of these. And so I should respond. And what it actually does when it responds, you'll see down here, is it will call in, let me find the right line. Not that lot, here we go, yeah, new switch, Alexa device, first device on, first device off. So now we have to go and find first device on to see what it's actually gonna do. And it's actually in my specifics uh, case over here, specifics.h, and here it'll tell you, okay, uh, the last action is powered on by Alexa at whatever the current hour, minute, and second are, and this device powered equals true. Okay, so that's gonna now turn this on. If I turn it off, similarly, this device powered equals off. So that request is going in and I'm translating it to be a true or false. Now again, remember that I could set this, this could be a servo being set to a position, this can be anything I like inside this um, Arduino scratch. Uh, but in this instance, it's turning on and off because this is a toggle mode device. And that again corresponds to uh, this over here saying that this is gonna be on or off. So if I now go back into bedroom and look at the detail of bedroom, uh, I should be able to see that the last action was powered on by Alexa at 190608. So that is, uh, yeah, that is uh, a few, yeah, a few minutes ago or a minute ago. Um, if I refresh that again and just pull it down again, just make sure I've got the most current detail. Yep, 1906.08. Alexa, turn off the bedroom. Okay. okay, and now if I refresh this again, then what I should see is that the bedroom details tells me, yeah, 1907.44, it got turned off. So it's tracking along with the clock. Um, it's got its own sense of time, so that will, uh, you know, that will, that's not too far out, it'll get a bit better at that. Um, but yes, it's performing these events and uh, it's allowing me to control this via itself, via any other device on my network and via um, my uh, yeah, sort of voice-driven assistant, uh, which I can't tell you the name of, otherwise she'll wake up and start talking to me again. Uh, again, so, so to prove that this is actually picking up from any other device, what I should be able to do is go to something else such as the bell jar downstairs. So if I go to the bell jar, so that's the IP13. Uh, and what I get is this UI. If I now go and tell it to, uh, let me pick up a better one, let me pick up uh, what one that knows about the others. 
Does the blind, does the feeder, oh, the feeder does. Let me go to the feeder. The feeder, do you know about these things? Oh, you only know about yourself as well, so I'm gonna have to run through discovery. I'm gonna have to show you my password, which means I won't do that. Should I do that? No, do you know what? I will do that because I don't necessarily need to show you all that. And now I have done, which was a mistake. Um, okay, <clears throat> let me carry on. Let me go from port 22 then. Okay, so here's my feeder. I'm gonna go into settings. I'm gonna to say to this, yep, I wanna go scanning, detect that lot. And then what I'll see in my device list is that this will build out a list of things it's looking around the network trying to find. And it'll run through these and it just searches in the background. It's just doing its thing now. But what it should find, if I if I actually jump up a little bit up the list, is I'll jump up to say, where did I say this one is? This is at 34, so I'm gonna start at 30. And end at 40. Let me start here. So here we go 30 to 40, 31, 32, 33, 34 is here. Found device bedroom. So again, it's identified using features JSON where it is and what it is. And if I go back into my devices now, I can see bedroom. And if my phone's still awake, I should be able to turn bedroom on. And that will wake up even though I'm connected now to IP22 rather than IP34, which is where this really is. I'm still able to send that same request because the features JSON of this identified that it was at that address and that the master switch was called master and the value is true or false so it knows how to render this UI and uh, how to interact with it and how to make it behave. And that is a quick overview of what it is that I'm doing uh, in my home uh, regards building a sort of comprehensive UI for home automation.